Hi everyone, so welcome to another episode of Fun with Flag Tags. Today we have Dr. Brown with us and he's going to be talking a little bit about the research that he does in his lab as well as um, the metabolism course and metabolism in general. So thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Brown. Okay, no problem. It's fun. <laughs> so um, to start off, we were just wondering what type of research goes on in your lab and what are you focused on? Um. The research focus of my lab um, is, is looking at um, the development of foam cells. Um, so, so foam cell essentially, it's just a, a, a macrophage that is just soaked up a whole lot of uh, fat, a whole lot of lipid, um, and ultimately will apoptose. And this typically will occur in the, in the arteries. Um, so it's so it's one of the um, one of the mechanisms involved in uh, in uh, atherosclerosis, the clot in of the artery. So, so we're interested in trying to work out the pathways of that. And from the from the standpoint of looking at um, what lipids actually get delivered from the bloodstream into these uh, into these type of cells, and um, we're also interested in. Um, uh, the role of these things called small nucleolar RNAs, which essentially they guide um, reactions that will occur on the RNA within the cell. And it appears that um, upon delivery of certain lipids um, to the cell, uh, there is a lot of degradation of the RNA, and this is in particular uh, because of an increased expression of these small nuclear RNAs. And this is actually, um, uh, uh, seems to be a mechanism that triggers the cell to start its uh, cell death process and thus deposit all the lipids and ultimately try to kill you. So, so that is one, um, one aspect of the research that we've been doing in the lab. And then another, uh, we, that we've been embarking on is, is kind of by accident, actually, um, in looking at cancer, uh, breast cancer, and the role of lipoprotein lipids that have been hydrolyzed by, by lipases, in particular lipoprotein lipase, and the delivery of lipids into these breast cancer cells or cell types. And it turns out that in the most aggressive um, cell type that is there out there for breast cancer, we turn on the, these lipids, we turn on the expression of pro-inflammatory cytokines. So essentially the signaling molecules that will promote breast cancer progression. Uh, we actually just submitted a paper on that yesterday, um, which hopefully we're gonna accept it if anyone is watching this and is a reviewer. But um, so, so, so that all came by accident, just primarily because um, uh, we, we found that uh, some breast cancer cell lines express lipoprotein lipase. And this has been published before, but I wasn't expecting to see physical protein be present. And that sort of sparked an interest to say, well, what's happening here? We don't know. Looked in the literature, there's not a lot out there uh, on this uh, aspect. So we started uh, started working on that together with uh, Dr. Christian and, and um, yeah, so far so good. So those are really the two things that my lab has been looking at at this point in time. That's awesome. That sounds really interesting. So um, why, like what was it that made you choose biochem specifically? Actually, it's kind of interesting. The first time anyone's ever asked that, I was in Amsterdam, uh, staying at a staying at a hotel, and the owner of the hotel. I was just sitting. I was sitting in the lobby and chatting with the owner of the hotel, and he just all of a sudden rolls up this ginormous marijuana spliff and just goes for it right there in front of me. I'm like, oh, okay, great, fine. Uh, get, get that secondhand high off of that. But, um, and so he asked me that. No, it, it was a little, it was an interesting question and I had to think about it. And I still give the same answer ever since, which is um, uh, the body is a puzzle. And how do you solve that puzzle? There are a lot of aspects to it. And um, I'm interested in puzzles and, <laughs> Lodge, trying to logically understand or figure things out. So thus, 
biochemistry was certainly uh, the route for me to try to work out the puzzle of the body. Yeah, it's a big puzzle, honestly. <laughs> so um, you teach biochem um, 3106, so metabolism, and this course is known for being a bit challenging. So what are some specific roadblocks to watch out for when taking this course for future students? Um, well, metabolism, it's, uh, it's a challenging topic no matter where you are, no matter what university. Um, and it's, it's in part because there, there, uh, there is a lot of memory work involved. And it's it's a bit difficult now in in that the lab component is actually being separated from the course. So having that hands-on understanding in a lab would absolutely help with, with some of the memorization and some of the work associated with the course. But um but for trying to remember this stuff, I remember doing this ages ago. Uh, or feels like it, I guess, yeah, it is ages ago now, I suppose. And um, it was a tough course. It was a very, it was a very, uh, very difficult course having to remember every single structure off by heart. And uh, not just that, of course, on pathways as well. And uh, additional pathways that you guys here uh, locally have not, uh, not seen. And uh, uh, it was a uh, again it was a similar scenario. How on earth do you remember this stuff? So there are different routes, there are different means that you can do it. I mean, you can do the brute force, draw out every pathway over and over and over again before you go to bed. I mean, if you think about it, it's kind of like doing a soliloquy in English, where you're you're doing a, a Julius Caesar like. And and you have to remember all, an entire passage, so you just keep writing it out over and over and over until you finally get it. Um, that sort of route could work in in metabolism. For myself, um, I I actually put a lot of the pathways, or actually all the pathways that I learned and ever learned into into music. So for myself, I'm a I'm a total metalhead. I I love heavy metal. And so, so it's not that it could be everybody's choice um, who, who would be taking metabolism, but take whatever favorite songs that you have and actually just make up your own lyrics to the tune that, um, that tie those pathways together, all the enzymes, all the steps. And, uh, and for me, that, that worked great, you know? Anytime I listen to certain songs by Metallica, the first thing I'm thinking of is uh, Crab Cycle, you know? But uh, rather than the song, which is kind of kind of bad, I suppose. But but it, it for me it worked as a as a great memory tool, and so that's really the biggest roadblock is trying to figure out the way to do it to remember. Um, Mun or, or at least the university, I should say, they do have posted, and I um, uh, I think it's through the student wellness site they do offer. Uh, a series of links that are associated with studying and studying tips that can be effective for other people. But um, I said, in my case, I just threw it all to music and it, and it, and, and it seemed to work fine. So, so uh, de definitely different ways for different people. And um, when you're taking the course, uh, we've restructured it in such a way that we have these timed assignments. They're online, available over a 24-hour period, a handful of questions, somewhere between 12 to 20 minutes to complete. So figure out what you can do with that first timed assignment as far as the memory work is concerned. If you try, if you fail badly, you need to change it or, or, or study or open the notes for that matter. But, um, but it's really different for everybody. That's really creative. I we definitely would love to hear the metallic lyrics. <laughs> Sounds super cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, so what other courses, like other than metabolism, what courses have you been teaching? And which one of these would be your favorite? So consistently I have been um teaching a fourth year course, 4230, which is uh, lipid and lipoprotein metabolism. So so essentially touching on my 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 specialties and teaching from that standpoint where the course is uh about a third of it is 
flat out run of the mill lecture style and you get an exam after that. But then the remaining two third are devoted to lit review, understanding lit, uh, published literature, doing critiques on the published literature and independent studies associated with different topics tied to, tied to lipid metabolism and diseases. Since obviously I, I would probably put my money on the bulk of students really being interested in medicine. So trying to spin it for the health aspects of of the that specialized type of metabolism seems to well it seems to seems to be a bit of a hit. Um, it's not uncommon for that course that I do get a wait list. Um, primarily, the numbers are kept small, so then that way everyone can uh, do their presentations, debate their their work, what have you. But uh, with the pandemic at the moment, it's a little bit messed up, and so last terms off for another course. Um, everybody got to do their presentations, but they were all pre-recorded, just like at the moment my lectures have been for for metabolism. So it's it's it sort of works. Um, at the graduate level, I I do uh, also do a graduate version of the lipid metabolism. Um, which is a lot more intense uh, work-wise. Um, also, a couple of others that I have been associated with. So, so our department does have a seminar series for our grad students, and we also bring in, uh, aside from the grad students presenting, we also bring in um, uh, university-wide and sometimes external speakers. And so I have been responsible for, for coordinating coordinating that. And also we have a graduate course by Chem 7000 that is like a intro to how to be a grad student, more or less. And so my role in that course has been really small, but I, I have been playing a, a, a part role with that course as well. I have dabbled with other courses since I've been here, but uh, at the moment, those are the ones that I, I, I am consistent with at the moment. So the, so the metabolism course, the fourth year uh, and graduate version of the lipid metabolism courses and um, uh, the Biochem 7000 at the moment. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> a little. Yeah. So um, given your expertise in metabolism, is there any mm -hmm. way that you can change your metabolism or are there like some common ridiculous myths out there that you um, think um, should be put straight or like you have an opinion on? That's an interesting question. Um, <laughs> and for those who are watching, I, I had received a, a list of questions. I actually never opened them. So this is coming to me as a little bit of a surprise. I need to think about this a minute. Um, from, from what's, so, so I have to flip it back. So from what standpoint or, or do you want to know about a change of metabolism? just in like a short-term thing, long-term benefit or detriment? Um, I guess like a lot of people want to like hear about these fat diets that will change their metabolism and help them lose weight. I don't know if it's for a short-term or for long-term, but um, in, that, in that regard, are these actually viable or like sustainable ways to lose weight? Um, there are diets obviously out there, like you got um, you could be doing diets involving, say, um, shoot, what are, what are, what are the, some of these powder drinks that you can mix up, um, that you would have for breakfast and lunch and then a small supper, uh, the Atkins diet, um, Mediterranean diet, so on and so on and so on. Um, they will change your metabolism, um, not just from, the, the whole body metabolism, but also affect uh, gut microbiota or the, the, the bacteria within the gut system that also can actually contribute to uh, whole body metabolism. So um, if I were to pick on one diet just for the hell of it, um, <laughs> keep keto, uh, the keto diets, um, they're very effective. Um, and they certainly can lose weight from them, which is great. But ultimately, 
um, ultimately, it, it does appear from some of the research that is starting to be released on uh, long-term effects is that there's actually de deposition of fat around the heart, which is usually not a good thing. So that does appear to be a, a side effect of the diet itself, which um, um, whether it's it's uh, going to cause any um, cardiac issues, still, still, that's 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 not fully clear, not fully fully understood at this point. But having any kind of lipid or fat de deposits around the heart is usually not a, not a great thing to have. Um, what else? I do remember, <clears throat> sorry, Dr. Chima did mm -hmm. emphasize a lot on the fact that keto diets are not as good for your health as you may think they are. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm not so a dietitian so, or, or nutritionist, so it's a bit difficult for me to, to go at it from that angle, but from, the, from at least from the biochemistry and physiology angle, um, mm -hmm. it does appear that, um, that it may not be a good thing. Yeah, okay. but then at the same time, Mediterranean diets, um, they raise your so called good cholesterol, your HDL cholesterol, um, and uh, the type of lipid, the, the type of fats that you're bringing in with the diet tend to be much more beneficial to the body as a whole. Um, so, so, so yeah, you, you can change it, and you can change it typically through your diet or. Um, or or uh, pharmac or through pharmacologic uh, routes. So so yeah. To add, ultimately answer, you can change your metabolism. <laughs> Just do you want to change it in a good way or in a bad way? Yeah. Do your research before you start any of these. Pretty much. Yeah. Um. So that was the end of our interview or podcast with Dr. Brown. I hope you enjoyed getting to know him outside of the courses that you've been doing with him. It definitely has been a fun experience for me and I'm sure for Rishi as well. Um, and I paid them to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and I just wanna say stay safe, um, take care of yourselves with the entire pandemic situation. And if you need any kind of help, reach out to the Student Wellness Center and there are a lot of resources around you that you could look at. Um, just take care of yourselves.